A mere blip in the evolutionary timeline, 300,000 years ago, saw the emergence of nine distinct human species on Earth. Only Homo sapiens, our species, survives today. And this brings up one of the most important problems in the evolutionary history of humans. Where did all the other people go? According to Professor Chris Stringer, head of human origins at the Natural History Museum in London, it's not a coincidence that several of them disappeared around the time that Homo sapiens started to spread out of Africa and around the rest of the world. Whether that was a direct connection is something we don't know. There is little evidence to determine the precise cause of our human cousin's disappearance, despite a plethora of possibilities. However, new research is offering intriguing hints. What is known is that, within a vast and varied group of bactal hominins, Homo sapiens stood as the last extant member of the species approximately 40,000 years ago. There are a variety of benign hypotheses, such as the idea that humans have higher child survival rates than other hominins or that other species are being pushed to the edge by climate change. Some advocate for a more proactive role, such as hunting other humans or reproducing with them to acquire their genetic makeup. The earliest Homo sapiens populations appeared in Africa around 300,000 years ago. Although they didn't resemble contemporary humans, they nonetheless resembled us more than other Homo species. Their foreheads were nearly vertical and their skulls were tall and rounded. They lacked the prominent jaw of species like Homo naledi and the scowling eyebrows of Neanderthals, Homo neanderthalensis. They also had chins, a feature unique to humans, though the reason why only humans have this protuberance is unknown. No other Homo species possesses chins. The hypothesis that Homo sapiens arose in a single location in Africa during a single massive evolutionary leap was disproved by a research published in Nature this year. The researchers demonstrated that Homo sapiens originated from at least two groups that resided in Africa for a million years before combining in many interactions by analyzing the genomes of 290 individuals. Paleoanthropologists are still debating very loudly who H. sapiens' last ancestor was but there is currently no solid evidence to support their positions. Moreover, H. sapiens does not have a singular origin. Ancient human remains have been found in Jebel Arha, Morocco, Omo Kibish, Ethiopia, and Floresbad, South Africa, indicating that our species originated in more than one location. There is disagreement over when Homo sapiens left Africa. A significant migration off of the continent occurred between 80,000 and 60,000 years ago, according to genetic data. However, it wasn't the initial voyage. According to dating, a puzzling H. sapiens skull found in Apodema, Greece, is at least 210,000 years old. Between 300,000 and 100,000 years ago, different Homo populations coexisted with modern humans as we now know. Some of them resembled humans quite a little, while the enigmatic Denisovans struggled to survive in the rarefied air of what is now Siberia and Tibet and perhaps farther afield, the stocky Neanderthals bore the harsh climate of Europe. Homo erectus, the cosmopolitan species named for its wide geographic distribution, was a long-legged species that still roamed parts of Indonesia, while Homo longi, often termed the Dragon Man, resided in China, in Central and Southern Africa. There lived a species known as Homo rhodesiensis, sometimes called Homo bodonsis or Homo heidelbergensis, Experts are still debating its nomenclature and membership. Other species were quite different from us. The tiny Homo floresiensis and Homo luzomensis lived, breathed, and died on the islands of Flores and Luzum in Indonesia and the Philippines, respectively, while Aignaliti, with its ape-sized brain, ambled over the wooded grasslands of South Africa. Professor Eleanor Seri, who leads the Human Paleo Systems Group at the Max Planck Institute of Geoanthropology in Jena, Germany, states that hominin species were probably dying out all the time. The fact that we are still here is probably unusual. There is little fossil evidence for the majority of extinct human species. For example, Aetnalidae individuals are restricted to a specific location in South Africa. Just a few people are aware of some of the other species. Homo sapiens first appeared in Africa, where surprisingly few remains of the species exist. According to Seri, our knowledge of the other hominins that coexisted with H. sapiens in Africa is still lacking. Nevertheless, a wealth of information about Neanderthals exists, including entire genomes that have been recovered from bones. Up until almost 40,000 years ago, these close ancestors wandered over Eurasia in small groups. Though scientists are still mostly in the dark about the Denisovans, their discoveries have fundamentally changed our conception of human evolution. 
Russian archaeologists discovered many human bone fragments in 2008 in the Denisova cave in Siberia. These parts included a finger bone and a portion of a toe. The entire genome of this, hitherto unidentified species, was revealed thanks to the preservation of portion of the finger bone's DNA by the cold. Researchers have deduced that Neanderthal and Denisovan people lived in small groups and frequently interbred based on their genomes. Based on maternally acquired mitochondrial DNA, some population estimates indicate that there were approximately 52,000 Neanderthals in Eurasia at the peak of their abundance before their numbers started to dwindle. Some speculate that the number of people may have ranged from 20,000 to 50,000. Our direct predecessors seem to have benefited much from a large population. Siri states, there was a lot more interbreeding because of those small population sizes among Neanderthals and Denisovans, and the genetics reflects that. These communities would have been less likely to survive because of their increased susceptibility to illnesses due to a lack of genetic variety. In contrast, the groupings of A. sapiens were larger and their genetic diversity was higher. This has effects that go beyond disease resistance. In humans, we observe more extensive social networks that span the entire environment, notes Stringer. Having large networks provides you with an insurance policy because if there is an environmental crisis, you're running out of food or water you can relocate into their settings, and since they are your relatives, they are not your enemies. According to Stringer, these kinds of networks also facilitate the sharing of creative ideas. The ability to adapt socially may have allowed Homo sapiens to withstand climate shifts that would have wiped off less resilient people and species. After simulating the ancient climates and ecosystems that Homo erectus, Homo heidelbergensis, and Neanderthals inhabited, a 2022 study published in Nature discovered that these species lost a sizable amount of their environmental niches prior to going extinct. Later Homo species, especially A. sapiens, were able to dwell in a wider range of habitats, according to a bigger 2023 simulation that included six Homo species, as well as the climate and flora during the previous three million years. The head of the IBS Center for Climate Physics in Busan, South Korea, and co-author of this study, Professor Axel Timmerman, thinks that Neanderthals eventually perished because they were outcompeted by modern humans. In 2020, he developed a computational model, described in a paper. According to Stringer, H. sapiens was able to outcompete its cousins due to a number of minor advantages. We now know that Neanderthals were extremely intelligent, but perhaps Homo sapiens was just marginally more intelligent, he states. According to him, seemingly insignificant inventions like weaving or sewing needles, both of which date back to 35,000 and 30,000 years ago, respectively, in the fossil record of Homo sapiens, might have skewed the odds in favor of the species. Subscribe for more insights into the fascinating journey of our species and the intricacies of human evolution.